In this video, we'll talk about the turnoff bound. This is a general technique that you can apply for any distribution, but we're going to do it for the binomial. So recall Markov's inequality. It said that if x is a non-negative random variable, then the probability it's greater than or equal to k is uh, at most something. And uh, this is a ter uh, not too strong of a bound because the only thing we assume to know about the distribution is that it's non-negative and that we know its expectation. Chebyshev's inequality was a little bit better because we also need its variance. So we can use our bound to say, it depends on the variance, right? If the variance is small, I can you know, tell you that it must be within an even smaller range. So now we're going to try to even derive something stronger. So if we knew its moment generating function, which we could you know, comp compute if we knew you know, its PMF or PDF, then um, if x is any random variable, there's no restriction. First, notice that e to the tx is always a non-negative random variable because e to the anything is always non-negative. And now what I'm going to do is going to say for any positive t, I'm going to take my uh, probability x greater than k, I'm going to exponentiate both sides. And this inequality stays the same direction only because t is greater than 0. Um, if t were less than 0, then the inequality here would actually flip. So once I have this, then I'm going to apply Markov's inequality because e to the tx is now a non-negative random variable. So I'm going to plug in what I have here. And then actually the top ends up being the moment generating function of x. So I'm going to take this to the next slide. So since the probability x greater than k is less than this thing, for any choice of t, okay, so if I in particular you know, found the t that minimizes this right-hand side, it actually must be less than that as well. So it's less than or equal to the minimum of this function over all choices of t. And so my goal is going to be choosing a t that makes this as small as possible so that I can bound the probability x is greater than k by a really small number, which is, which is ideal. So first, if x is a sum of independent xi's, then recall that the moment generating function of a sum of independent variables is the product of the MGFs. So I just replace the sum uh, with, with the MGF with the product of the smaller MGFs. And then um, I'm going to take this to the next slide uh, here. And uh, so we're going to try to derive a turnoff bound for the binomial. And the form of it is going to be the probability x is greater than some multiple of its mean. So for example, I want to bound the probability that x is greater than three times its mean or something like that. Um, Recall, x is the sum of independent Bernoulli random variables, and the mean was np. So the moment generating function of a Bernoulli is the expected value of e to the txi, or sorry, that's the mgf in general. But it only, the Bernoulli random variable only takes on two, two values. So when I use lotus to compute this expectation, I only have two terms. And then you can do the math, which isn't super interesting, but I get um, this thing here. This thing here is of the form 1 plus x, like where this huge thing is x. So I wanted to really quickly show you this inequality, which is that 1 plus x is always less than or equal to e to the x. So this bottom line is 1 plus x, this top curve is e to the x, and this proves that 1 plus x is always less than or equal to e to the x. So I'm taking this to be x, and I'm replacing 1 plus x with e to the x. Then I you know, take my thing, and I plug in the Bernoulli one that I had here. And the, uh, since I'm taking the product of n of them, and they're all the same, right? they're i, i, d then I can uh, raise it to the nth power. And you know you can do some more algebra. So, so where we're at here is that the probability x greater than k is, again, I'm choosing a t, the, small, the, the best t that minimizes, makes this as small as possible. And so um, what I want is something like this, right? I want to bound the probability x is greater than some multiple of its mean. So I'm going to plug in k to be 1 plus delta mu. And also, you know, to, to find the minimum value of this function here, what we do is take take the derivative with respect to t and set it to 0. And when you do that, you actually get t to be log 1 plus delta. So now I'm just going to plug in t and k um, into this equation, and it's just unimportant algebra. And you basically get this equation at the bottom. And so this is actually a really good bound because it's like exponentially small. It goes e to the negative something, right? And the way we did this, again, is we exponentiated both sides to the with like e to the t something. And the t was variable. We could you know It worked for all t greater than 0. And so what I did is I optimized the t um, to make the bound as tight as possible. And so that's how I can get an exponentially small bound. And then you can actually um, derive this other bound, which is like the probability x is less than you know 10% of its mean or something, uh, for delta between 0 and 1, um, using optimizing over t less than 0 instead of t greater than 0. So let's compare Markov and turnoff bounds. So suppose x is binomial 500.2, and so the mean is 100. What's the best bound we can get for the probability x is at, most, uh, at least 150? If you use Markov's inequality, you get uh, e of x over 150, or 2 thirds, which is not great. And if you use turnoff bounds, uh, you actually get 0. 0.00024. And this is, a, again, a really tight bound because it's exponentially small, and we, we were optimizing over a ton of t. So we actually use Markov to prove turnoff. 